Hey, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to see how to work with the flash of our camera. We are also going to see how to solve some issues about the ambient lighting and how to take the flash into account. These will be general questions, so these will do whether you have a reflex camera or a mirrorless one. Some camera models don't have a built-in flash, but rather an external one that needs to be attached to the camera. It's important to know that the light of the flash will be an extra support for the lighting of the scene. So, we can use it in cases where there is no light at all, or in cases where there is a good lighting on the scene, but we would like to minimize the shadows that are projected by it. This is why the flash is also called filling flash, because we can fill the shadows with light. It's also interesting to know, regarding the white balance, what role the flash plays in this. As we've seen in the lesson about white balance, there's color temperature. So, we've got wor warm colored lights and cool colored lights. The flash of our camera leans to a neutral temperature, almost white, between 5,500 and 6,000 Kelvin, depending on the manufacturer. Also, the flash of our camera has a small size, so it doesn't have much power, really. This means that you can, you'll can you only be able to lighten things that are at a short distance. This is very important. The flash can't lighten objects placed far away from the camera. For this, you need to know that there is the foreground, which can be lightened with the flash depending on the settings used, and also the background, which can be lightened with other parameters of the camera, such as the ISO or the aperture. In any case, we'll see how it, it affects the ambient lighting. It's essential to know that when working with the flash, there are two types of lighting, so we'll need to differentiate them. It's very important, okay? You also need to understand how the flash actually works. The flash of many of the cameras available on the market work in TTL mode. You'll see that TTL is everywhere, and the camera on the manual TTL means through the lens. So the camera measures the lighting of the scene through the lens in order to regulate the flash along with the settings you, you're using. Some Nikon cameras may offer a manual mode. This means that the camera adjusts the flash with a fixed power. You can set it at a maximum level, half, a quarter, an eighth, but, as I said, not many cameras come with this manual mode, so we won't talk about it. So, the TTL mode adapts the flash to each given situation. That's why sometimes we find our scene with too much light, or not too much light. We can fix that if we understand our camera settings, so the more we know, the more we know about the camera, the better. If we use the flash, we can't work as quick as when we use the burst mode. A lot of shots in a short time, okay? The flash has a kind of a cooling down period, because it uses the battery of the camera. If we use an external flash, it will be powered by batteries, and it wouldn't use the energy from the camera. So, guys, in short, the flash actually slows down your work, because it needs to recharge, okay? Thus, if we need to take many photos in a short time, you probably see a little warning on the camera telling you that it's busy and it's like, I am recharging, okay? So, and this warning message will vary depending on the manufacturer. 
What else can we find on the menu? Well, there is an option that you'll see in any camera, the red eye reduction. Let's take a look at this Canon camera. See, here's the option called red eye reduction. You can enable it or disable it. You'll also find a section called flash control. There are many settings inside to adjust the built-in on or, or external flash. And this time, as I said, we'll see the built-in flash settings. Regarding the red eye reduction, I suggest that you give it a try at home. Every camera is different and I'm only giving you general guidelines about what could work, so you need to try it for yourselves. The red eye effect is caused by the dilated pupils in a dark environment, and we tend to use the flash in those occasions, right? So, the flash lightens what's inside the blood vessels in our eyes, and that's why. The red eye reduction works in emitting a quick pre-flash pre to contract the pupils, but there's a little gap in time between the pre-flash and the actual flash, so this doesn't always work well. Try it for yourselves, check whether, whether the red eye reduction of your camera works as intended. Although I suggest that you disable it, because it doesn't ma make much difference most of the times, and it will consume battery nonetheless. How can we minimize this problem? Positioning the flash in a direction other than parallel, parallel to the camera lens. If we position it to a side or toward the ceiling, you won't have issues with the red eye effect. Note that this problem usually happens with people who have light colored eyes. It's a common issue among them, okay? Let's take a look at a different matter when working with a flash. Turn on your camera, change the mode to manual and set a higher speed. Don't worry about the other settings for now. We're just going to check something very simple and basic. If it, even if you have it set at 1 divided 4000, which is the maximum speed with this Canon reflex camera allows, as soon as you activate the flash, the speed will automatically decrease to 1 divided 200. This means that the camera has an optimal maximum speed when used in conjunction with the flash. With this camera, it's 1 divided 200, but the number may vary depending on the model. With some mirrorless camera, you won't find this problem because they work slightly different. The reflex cameras have something called shutter, which opens and closes, right? When working with the flash, we need it to lighten the scene, and that light must come back to the camera while the shutter is still open, so that it receives that light. That's why the camera limits us to a certain maximum speed in which the camera is able to receive the light emitted by the flash. Hope you understand it, okay? I insist, in some lighter mirrorless cameras, you won't find this problem because they work different. They don't have a mechanical shutter. Instead, they have a sensor that's, that does the work. It's important that you have this in mind when working with a lot of light and the flash as well. Reducing the speed will sometimes cause an overexposure to light and it will be even worse if we are also using the flash, okay? All right, let's practice a bit to better understand how our camera works. We're going to try to cover different situations and we'll see how we can manage the flash and the lighting. So try it at home. We're going to use simple objects that we can find anywhere, so common objects so that we can practice indoors and outdoors as well, okay?